rental properties versus rental cars. Oh, this is getting good. As a longtime real estate investor and someone that has made millions in real estate, are rental properties or rental cars a better business? Which one makes more? We're gonna talk about which one is better. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, no, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big stack. She can fix that. Let's fix that. I'm gonna to explain to you the difference between rental properties versus rental cars and give you the pros and cons of both. I'm gonna share with you a surprising secret about rental houses. And I'm gonna share with you my biggest secret on how to get a rental house or a rental car with little to no money. So let's talk about rental houses. There are so many benefits to rental houses and I wanna tell you all of the difference because I like starting with the good. Like I said, I'm Noelle Randall, real estate millionaire, entrepreneur, mentor, and mom of five, and I have made a ton of money in real estate. So rental properties is definitely something that I know very well and how I created so much of my wealth. So let me tell you about the benefits of them because there are so many. There's definitely some cons and we're gonna get into that a little bit later, but let me tell you how rental properties are awesome because there really are some amazing things that I have done to change my whole financial situation. Rental houses have so many benefits like I said long-term income cash flow coming in each month rental properties actually increase your net worth so as you are building your net worth and you're getting more rental properties whether you have equity or in them or not it is increasing your net worth because if you have even a little bit of equity a rental property is an asset and the more assets you have and the higher your net worth is the more people will lend to you or to your business I have created so much wealth for myself, my family, my children through rental properties. Like I said, when I was getting many of these rental properties, I had enough money to quit a job, a six figure job. You can have rental properties that you keep and bring you money in each month, whereas the tenant is paying the rent and you are paying down your mortgage. And so you have two benefits right there. You have the money coming in from the tenant so you can pay your mortgage, but then also each time you pay your mortgage, you are paying down that balance and creating more equity for yourself. So even if you only keep your rental property two or three years, the way that I do most of mine, and we'll get into strategy a little bit later, but if you only keep your rental property, for example, two, three, four years, that's usually about as long as I will keep mine, and you have the tenant paying down the rent, usually when I sell my rental properties, I walk away with a large check, 50,000, 75,000, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases, but usually at least 75 or $100,000 after just having it a few years. So again, not only did I have that money coming in, as you sell your properties off, you get those large lump sums of cash that really boost up your wealth. And then we'll even get into some tax deductions and 1031 exchanges and all this awesome things that you can do to really preserve your wealth. So let's get to the next point about rental cars. So in this wonderful year that we are in, there is so much opportunity to not just do rental houses. You can have rental cars. In fact, you can almost have your own rental car business. Now, when I started investing in real estate in 2010, you know, 2009, the correct way, I have been very successful in real estate. In these past 10, 11 years, I have made millions. But in the past two years, something surprising has happened with rental cars. There are so many new websites, new apps, such as Turo, T-U-R-O, and Car Hire, C-A-R-H-Y-R-E.com, where you can use your own car and rent it out to other people and make money when you're not driving your car. This has completely changed the game when it comes to rental cars and how you can make money. Literally, instead of having a fleet or a portfolio of rental houses, you can have a few rental cars and make a lot of money. I literally have students that make six, $8,000 a month off a few rental cars, not rental houses. And one of the benefits of rental cars and getting a car is a lot easier in most cases than it is getting a house. It's a lot faster. You can get a car in just a couple of hours, even if you're financing it. No long process of getting a mortgage or contracts and all these things. I literally have bought two and three cars at a time in one day. And you can do the exact same thing too. Cars are really easy to get. The credit doesn't need to be as good to get finance for a car. In fact, you can have terrible credit and still get two or three cars. Additionally, cars are much cheaper each month. 
obviously having a rental property, you're going to have to pay the electricity bill and the taxes and the insurance and, you know, all of the expense that goes along with keeping up real estate, which can be one of the cons that we'll get to in a little, a little bit later of all of the maintenance required for a rental property versus maintaining a car. Maintaining cars are much cheaper, much easier, much easier to get done and requires a whole lot less capital. So you don't need as much money and it's easier to do. And let me tell you a surprise right now. So let me tell you a big surprise because this is crazy. And I, again, just found this out in the past couple of years as I have been doing rental cars and rental properties. I literally have cars that I make more money on than some of my rental properties. Yeah, yeah, you heard that right. Let me say it again. I have cars that I make more money on renting them out to people on a daily basis versus my properties, properties that I have furnished, put towels and furniture and all this beautiful, the Airbnb that I am in now is mine. And you see all of these beautiful things in here. I literally have a car that makes more money than a house. Yes. So let me get into how you get that part done. So before we get into all of that, let me tell you the bad because this is not a fluff piece. Like I said, I'm going to give it to you and give you the truth. Rental houses and rental cars have things that are bad about them. Okay. There are pros and cons to everything. So let me be real with you like Noel always does and tell you the cons of rental houses. Rental houses have cons. I have done rental properties and been a landlord, managed properties, and done that for over 10 years. Like I said, I had over 40 single family homes at one point, and I replaced a six figure income as a VP at a bank with just some rental properties. And some of them were not very nice, I assure you. So rental houses is a great way to make money. It's a great way to build your wealth, but let's be honest and let me tell you some of the bad things. Obviously, you have a higher expense rate with houses. You know, you could lose hundreds of thousands of dollars if you buy a home incorrectly or if something happens to that home and you're not properly insured. Just using, for example, if you have a fire in the home and you forgot, you let the insurance lapse, there's things that can really happen to a house that can really take you down. Secondly, evictions. Like I said, I have been doing rental properties and been a landlord for many years. And for like three years, I managed all of my properties kind of by myself or the ones that were in the area that I lived in. And I can tell you there were definitely some headaches. I had tenants that would not leave after the lease was over. We had to call sheriffs and things like that to get them out. I have had tenants try to destroy the property. Now this doesn't happen to me as much because if you look at my playlist, I have an entire playlist on YouTube that teaches you how to manage your properties and how to do some of the things the correct way so you don't make the mistakes that I did. But evictions, eventually as a landlord, you are going to have to do an eviction. And this is a big con. Usually you are evicting someone for non-payment, meaning they have not paid you and you still have a mortgage. So that is definitely one of the cons with rental properties is that you still usually have a mortgage regardless to whether the tenant is paying or not, and you are going to be responsible to come up with that money. So you usually have to have more money in reserves, in credit cards or line of credits, or just straight up savings that you can cover the mortgage. This can get very stressful, you know, depending on how many rental properties you have, making sure that you have enough reserves kept to the side that you just leave and you don't touch available for your rental properties. And even if you don't do long-term tenants, you will still have cons. Like I said, now I don't do long-term tenants where I rent out properties that are unfurnished and vacant and I rent them out on a monthly basis. Now I do short-term rentals, Airbnbs, and I have a nice portfolio of those. And there are cons to Airbnb as well. You may have guests that have parties. You may have guests that smoke in your property. You, have, you may have guests that steal TVs. Literally, I've had guests steal TVs. So there are definitely things that go along with an Airbnb that are definite cons. But obviously, the money that I have made has outweighed all of those cons. But I need you to know there are some. Let me tell you the cons of rental cars. Ooh. So now let's talk about all of the cons and the bad things that have to do with rental cars. So like I said, rental houses have appreciation. Usually houses go up in value over time. So when you sell them after three or four years, you have gone up in value and you make even more money on them. That is not the case with cars because usually cars are considered depreciating assets. 
Real estate and homes are usually considered appreciating assets, meaning they are going up in value over time, but cars lose value or go down in value over time and as you use them. Not the same with real estate. So those are two major differences between rental properties and rental cars. Rental cars lose value. If you drive a car and it has lots of miles on it, it is depreciating, it is going down and down. So if you keep a car three, four years, you are not going to sell it usually for more money than you pay for it. Just being really honest with you until you get into some higher level stuff that I'm going to teach you if you watch the video on how to start a rental car company using Toro. I've made an entire video teaching you that and the strategy so that you don't lose money on your cars. But that is a big con of rental cars. They go down in value and when you sell them, you usually are not getting very much for them because of the mileage. So you have to be very strategic on how you buy them and how many miles you let get driven on your car. That's the first thing. The second thing, and this is a major con, okay, of rental cars, they are easy to crash. Yes, they are very easy to crash or damage and ha you know scuff up the tires, flat tires. Someone scuffed up the rims on my car, you know, driving it too close. So it is very easy to damage a car, much more so than it is to damage a rental property. Like people have to be very deliberate and malicious to break couches and steal TVs. They are really trying to do that. But oftentimes when someone's just driving your car, doing a really good job, trying to do their best, they can still damage your car or get into a car accident. And so there's more of that with rental cars and you really have to be prepared and have a little bit more reserves or people that are available to fix your cars fast because it happens very often. So that is a big con. But again, I'm gonna tell you the conclusion to this because it's super important so you know which one is best for you. So like I said, I do rental houses and rental cars right now. So the bottom line to this is you should probably do both. Yes, rental houses and rental cars have pros and cons, but I've told you all of the pros and cons of both and rental properties and rental cars have some amazing benefits and they can make you a lot of money if you do it as a business. So let me kind of give you some tips on how you really turn this into a business and make a lot more money with this. I was able to quit my six figure job with rental properties. So it's always going to be my suggestion that you do rental properties, you do real estate in some way, shape or form. It's still the number one way to wealth. Just being honest with you, if you look this stat up, you will see that 89% of all millionaires were created so through real estate. That was true over 100 years ago and it's still true to this day. So I would never in a million years tell you that you should just do rental cars or that rental cars could ever beat rental properties. With rental properties, there's definitely some headache, but you can grow as you grow. So my story, I was able to quit my job with just some small rental properties, just regular houses in different suburban type neighborhoods, nothing too crazy, apartments, condos, you know, nothing too crazy, no mansions, no beautiful luxury, anything. So I was able to just take regular types of houses and make money off of it. When I got into the rental cars, I started with newer cars and you could do the exact same thing. You can get zero and 2% and 3% interest on cars that are brand new or just a couple of years old. In fact, I suggest that you get cars that are a couple years old if you're gonna do a rental car business because that's what you can do now. You're not Hertz or Enterprise or National or any of these large rental companies. You are your own business. So you can just buy a car that's a couple years old, just like I bought some rinky dink rental properties and start making money on them. You really can do both. You just want to make sure again, that you get your business license, that you get your EIN, that you get your, you know, professional phone number and all of the things that I teach you when you're starting a business. If you don't know what to do, please check out my link to the playlist where I teach you how to start a business. It's all absolutely free on YouTube. So I have created an entire course where I'm teaching you all of this and more. I teach you my exact formula to investing, how I got started with little to no money and without risking a lot. And you can do the exact same thing. I have this free training. Please go to noellesfreetraining.com. That's Noel, N-O-E-L-L-E -L -L -E with an S, Noel's free training.com. There is an entire course. It's about an hour long, just a little bit too long for me to teach here, but it will break down my exact steps and exactly what you can do too. I just want to make sure that you have all of the resources, all of the tools and all of the knowledge that you need to be successful. This is Noel to your success.